Hello and welcome to this presentation of understanding movement data with moving pandas. My name is Anita Grasa. You might know me from my work with the QGIS project from GIS Stack Exchange, or you might even have heard of moving pandas before. So what is moving pandas? It's a Python library that aims to make it really easy to work with trajectory data and to explore it in a way that is intuitive. Bit of motivation, movement data is everywhere right now. I'm sure you remember from earlier this year when the container ship ever given was stuck in the Suez channel and we saw all these awesome visualizations and remote sensing images of the ship and all the other ships that got stuck due to this incident. But ships, traffic, um, humans are not the only things that are being tracked nowadays. For example, ecologists also track animals on land, in sea and in the air to better understand their behavior and how they might be able to protect them in a better way. So there are a lot of different use cases where you might be interested in exploring movement data and analyzing it for different purposes. And that's where Moving Pandas comes in. It's supposed to be general purpose. It is built on top of GeoPandas and provides static and interactive visualizations, either through GeoPandas and Matplotlib or through Holoviews. Let's jump right in. Because we are using GeoPandas, we can read from all kinds of spatial file formats, for example, from GeoPackage. It's just one line, as you can see here in the short example, and this data set contains uh, around 6,000 points that includes timestamps and the IDs of the trackers that were used to generate them. So this data set contains the positions from multiple trackers and we can identify them based on this one column. Of course, since it's a geodata frame now, we can plot it. We can have a look at the distribution, but what we see here basically are just points. And these points have the temporal information attached, but there is no other information that we might be interested in, such as the movement speed or the direction of movement. So if we wanted to compute those with GeoPandas from scratch, it would be quite involved because you always have to group by the trajectory ID. You have to make sure that the temporal order is correct um, and so on. So. Moving pandas takes care of all those things and you don't have to worry about them anymore. How that, can you do that? For example, by putting the geodata frame into a moving pandas trajectory collection as shown here. You just specify the geodata frame, the ID of the trajectories and the column that contains the timestamp. And once that is done, you can quickly plot the resulting trajectories again here with the um, matplotlib functionality to create static plots. Next, of course, we are not just interested in just the trajectories themselves. We also want to understand the movement itself. And one of the key variables, of course, is movement speed. How can we do that? It's as simple as that. Instead of uh, saying that we want to plot the trajectory ID column, we now say that we want to plot the speed. And if you have been at playing attention, you also know that the speed was not contained in the original uh, geo package. So the speed here is actually computed in the background by moving pandas. It's kind of a convenience functionality functionality for you if you spe specify that you want to plot the speed and it, the speed is not yet available in the data set it will be automatically calculated. So you can visualize it here and you can see exactly which trajectory segments have which speed. Other useful functionalities that are built in in moving pandas include detecting stops so uh, locations where the trajectory was standing still or not leaving a certain uh, diameter for a specific amount of time. Uh, to do that we have a trajectory stop detector class and we initialize it by uh, using the trajectory collection that we previously created. And then we can call different functions such as get stop points 
with the parameters for the minimum duration of the stop and the maximum size, the maximum diameter of the stop in meters. And if we do that, we get a geodata frame with the stop locations as points, uh, the start and end time of the stop, as well as uh, already for convenience, the duration here in seconds. And of course, we can also plot these stops then in the context of the trajectories to see where the moving objects uh, spend their time uh, standing still for a while. We can also use these stops then to split the original trajectories into individual sub-trajectories. Uh, to do that, there's a stop splitter class, which can be applied to either the whole trajectory collection or to an individual trajectory as shown in this example. Again, the parameters, you already know them from uh, before. It's the minimum duration of the stop and the maximum diameter of the stop. So when we apply this to an individual trajectory, it returns a trajectory collection with n number of trajectories. In th this case, it's seven. And we can plot them, for example, like this in alternating colors now, uh, always either pink or gray. And these are the segments bit between the stops. I already mentioned that um, Moving Panda supports both static and interactive plots, so now I want to show you some of the interactive examples in Holoviews. Unfortunately, I don't know how these can be integrated into Reveal.js, so I'm switching now back to the original Jupyter Notebooks to show you how the plots look like in um, the interactive uh, format. Uh, again, I'm loading here the ge uh, GeoLife dataset and we do the trajectory stop detection. And uh, with Holoviews, basically instead of uh, the normal plot function, we use hvplot. And we can build up our maps, including base maps, in a very intuitive fashion. And now we can also zoom in and look at the details of these trajectories. So this is uh, the first trajectory. When we extract the stop points, we can add them to the map and we can size them based on the duration of the stop, for example. So the pink locations now are the stop points that we also saw previously. And now we can actually explore where they are. They're usually in front of crossings where the person carrying the track across the street and therefore probably had to wait to let traffic pass. We can also extract stop segments, so this is the whole part of the trajectory that was uh, particularly slow and thus detected as a stop. And we can add them to the visualization as well, and then you can see the whole segment that um, was detected based on the rule that we set for the minimum duration and the maximum diameter. And finally, we can also visualize the splitting. So on the right hand side, you now see how the individual segments look like compared to their original trajectory on the left. Of course, this also works for the trajectory collection, as I already mentioned. So you don't have to do it for every individual segment uh, trajectory. Another feature that is pretty cool and I want to uh, show you is trajectory aggregation. So if you have a lot of trajectories in a data set, uh, it might be pretty difficult to grasp what's going on if you just plot the individual trajectories. So here there's uh, a bit larger demo set, data set with about 33, 34,000 points and 77 trajectories. And it represents a ship traffic. So uh, here in the port of Gothenburg, and to do the trajectory generalization, we extract significant points. Those would be the blue ones, and then we cluster them. And the cluster centers are here visualized as the red center, uh, red points. Um, it's done using the trajectory collection aggregator, and you can then extract the significant points and the clusters using the dedicated functions. And Really, the, the final result is when you extract the flows between the clusters and you can visualize them as shown here in this example, which makes it really easy to spot the main routes through the harbor area and see where the ship traffic is going on. This can take a while. It's not 
very much optimized for speed right now but one thing that you can easily do is to first uh, do uh, pre-processing so I compared also the, the generalized trajectories versus the original trajectories and in this example you can then see that the results uh, in the end are uh, very very similar and it makes the processing much faster. Uh, the same can be applied of course to other data sets for example I also have one here with a gull migration data, so birds uh, migrating from Europe to Africa and back um, for during the seasons. And here you can also see the main um, paths that they follow from the south of Finland through Ukraine, Turkey, uh, and along the Egypt uh, border into Kenya. So these are just a couple of examples of things that you can do with moving pandas and I would encourage you to look into um, the, the other examples that are provided in the moving pandas example repository. Of course you're always welcome to check out moving pandas in the github repo as well. It's really easy to install since it's available on Conda Forge, and we also have extensive documentation on read the docs. Uh, so I encourage you to give it a try and reach out if you have any questions. I'm looking forward to having a chat now. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you for that great presentation, Anita. You're getting a lot of love in the chat for your presentation on that library and um, a couple of questions in the chat. So we'll go ahead and start there. Okay. So, can moving pandas compute length, uh, specifically in kilometers in this case, of a trajectory? Yeah, yeah, it does that. So it can compute the length of each individual segment and also the length of the complete trajectory. And it also takes care of different projections. So if you put in latitude longitude, it will calculate it in meters. If you put it in a, a coordinate reference system that is not meters, but for example, feet, then you will actually get feet back as a length measurement. Awesome, thank you. Another question is, can you use moving pandas package and calculate the network track if I only have origin and destination? Yeah, that's an excellent question. So I didn't touch on that, but really moving pandas is focused on tracking data rather than origin destination information. There are a lot of excellent uh, routing libraries that can be used to calculate network routes if you have this kind of information. So I have decided not to include that directly into moving pandas. But it should be compatible since um, most of them will be able to interface with geo pandas, which moving pandas is built upon. Perfect. And then I believe, let's see, there are a couple of questions. Um, I found out there's a library like move pandas. To learn more about this, could you please share the notebook file? Um, and a couple other questions in that uh, kind of realm of things where what's the roadmap for moving pandas and things like mm -hmm. that? So I know that's not really a question, it's just could you share those types of things in the chat um, with these folks? Cause there's a lot of interest. Okay, I will go to the chat. I will share a couple of the key links again that I had in my presentation and beyond. Um, and concerning a roadmap, yes, there are a lot of uh, feature ideas in the issue tracker. And if you have more, please just, just dump them in. I'm always collecting new ideas. Awesome. So help Anita out, uh, give her some ideas or where the interest lies uh, for her roadmap. But I will leave it to you then, um, everyone to kind of connect via the chat, again, Slack, uh, direct messaging, anything like that. But thank you again for your time and presentation, Anita. Thanks for having me.